everyone, so this video is going to be all about my online store, how I make the things to sell, what I use to package up the orders, and how I actually ship everything. So I'm going to be doing sort of a rundown of all the things I use, all my techniques, and how I run an online store as an illustrator. And the things I sell include um, enamel pins. I have a few different designs. I have, um, I think, like four or five different designs. I sell art prints either printed by someone else or printed by myself. The ones I used to print from printed.com are these, and they're um, sort of like postcard prints, but I don't use them anymore because the shipping speeds are either really, really slow for a good price or they're really expensive, <laughs> really expensive shipping because they're overseas. This is a print I make myself on my printer. I now print everything myself, except for the enamel pins. Those are made through a manufacturer. I sell sticker packs that I make, and I use my Cricut to cut these. But you can also use a pair of scissors, and I put them in these little packs in Ziploc bags, and I staple the header to them. These are kind of a hassle to make, so I do prefer making these um, sticker sheets, because you can actually peel them off like that. And I have a bunch of different art prints, sticker sheets, um, enamel pins. We can also sell originals and handmade items and charms and bookmarks and um, wooden pins and just there's really no limit if you can think of something to make you can probably sell it on your store. The first sticker pack I ever made it was these stickers and I would cut them out by hand and I put them in this pack and I sold them online and also um, at actual conventions. Um, so this was the first sticker pack I ever made. I used an office printer just like a home printer. It was like a HP NV7640. It had really nice print quality and nice colors, but the one problem with it is that the ink is so expensive. But I used that printer for a long time and I would just buy the ink cartridges. I refilled them sometimes, but um, the refills always got muddy, so I had to buy new color cartridges anyways. And um, the sticker sheets, well actually before I made a sticker sheet, I bought a Cricut and that allowed me to cut out the stickers faster because the Cricut automatically die cuts or kiss cuts stickers. And die cutting is when you cut completely through the paper and kiss cutting is when you have sticker sheets like this. And I use Cricut printable vinyl paper. It's my favorite kind of paper. The only thing is that it's kind of slick on the back to because it's, it makes it easy to peel off the sticky mats that come with a Cricut. So that um, slickness can kind of jam some printers um, it jams my printer sometimes, but also a big problem is that it tends to curl when you leave it um, without anything on top of it. It just naturally curls, so that's another annoying thing. I've been experimenting with the Photo Paper Direct matte printable vinyl paper, and it's pretty much the same in terms of quality, but it's so thick that it takes a lot of pressure for the Cricut to cut through it, and if your blade is a bit dull, then it won't completely cut through. So. I kind of prefer the printable vinyl overall because I use a Cricut and it's thinner um, and it's still really nice quality and the colors are really vibrant on it. So I would recommend that because it's pretty easy to access and also if you live in the States, um, online labels is a good site to get paper from. I actually really like their sticker paper but I don't order it because the shipping is so expensive because I live in Canada and it kind of makes it not worth it. Um, to save the money and also the currency conversion. It's just not worth it for me to use that site, but that is also a really good site for sticker paper. Their glossy sticker paper is really nice, but I like matte paper. It's just a personal preference. I like to make matte things. I just think they have a really nice tactile quality to them and they seem more like original artwork. I don't know. It's just a personal preference. So my Cricut machine is a Cricut Explore Air 1. It's the first Explore Air. I have it in a lavender color and it works really well for me. Um, you just use Cricut Design Space, you import your file to Design Space, and then it cuts around your stickers, and then you can... I do print, then cut, that's the mode I use, and there's tons of tutorials online on how to use a Cricut. That's not what this video is about, so if you want to know how to make uh, sticker sheets and to cut out things with your Cricut, there's tons of resources online, but that's what I use. After I decided I was sick of paying for really expensive ink costs, I wanted to get a printer that could be refilled, so it had separate ink cartridges. Um, and also I wanted to have like a, a reliable refill system. So I decided to get the Canon Pixma Pro 100 to make prints and stickers because this has eight different cartridges and I actually buy my refill ink from Precision Colors and I modify the cartridges myself and reset the chip and there's a, there's a whole process for that but I do refill my own ink using precision colors and this is a really really common method for people to do. A channel I actually learned a lot of this from is Jose Rodriguez. Um, he has tons of great resources on how to properly use printers and maintain them 
And basically one of the biggest things is you have to use your printer. If you don't use your printer, you're going to end up with clogged print heads that will result in streaky prints because printers are made to print, they're not made to sit around. So if you're gonna get this printer, I would recommend you print something twice a week, even if it's just a four by six, because it keeps everything running smoothly. And it's not really a waste of ink to do this um, because it's an even bigger waste of ink to clean cartridges in the printer, to put it through its, um, its nozzle cleaning. That wastes way more ink than just doing a four by six print. So that's what I use, and I use the Canon pro luster paper for my prints. I want to try out the Canon matte paper also, but um, matte paper doesn't really show darks as well as luster paper does and glossy paper, so I think luster is kind of a nice um, middle point and it has a really nice sort of texture to it and it just, it just, I just like the way it looks. I think it's a good compromise. Well, it's not even really a compromise. The, the, the paper is really good quality paper. You basically end up paying a dollar a sheet, so that's um, that's what I use to make prints. I also use this paper cutter. It's actually new. I got it from Amazon. And one thing that bothers me is this, this is always crooked, so I got a replacement one. And um, no matter what you do, it's just, it's always crooked. I think that's just how, that's just how it works. But it doesn't cut crookedly, so that's good. And that way you can set this to whatever size you need to cut and you tighten it and then this is a self clamp So you don't need to hold anything down. It just does it on its own, which is super helpful So this is fairly new. I've had it for about a week and it's really helped You can also get prints printed other places if you live overseas in um, Europe, you can use printed.com, which is a really good website. They make pretty decent, decently printed postcards. Um, so that's what I used to use, but like I said, the shipping just got too expensive, so I don't use them anymore and I make my own prints. Um, but with Patreon, I've started to use just the regular Canon matte paper and I really like it. It's a bit on the thin side, but I print fairly small things, so it doesn't really matter if it's too thin. If I was printing something huge, you would notice how thin it was, but since they're four by six, um, it's the perfect paper. Another good website is Catprint. I've heard really good things from Catprint. They're just a little bit a little bit more pricey than I can get by printing at home, so that's why I don't use them. But if you need to print in like huge bulk, Catprint is a good option as well. And there's tons of other resources out there. And you can also order stickers online too. They're just one of the easiest things to make at home, so that's why I've never really ordered stickers before. My enamel pins I order from a manufacturer. I'm not like an entirely, totally happy with the quality I always get, so I don't really want to say who it is, but you, it really depends on what you need and where you live, because different manufacturers will have different shipping speeds and different shipping costs depending on where you live, but I just order them from a Chinese ma manufacturer. I don't use a middleman or anything, I just contact the company directly. And I, I order the backing cards from Vistaprint, they're just business cards and I usually get them um, premium business cards, but um, I don't really think it's worth it to get like super nice backing cards because it's just the packaging. And the bags are just cello bags from Amazon. You can also get them from clearbags.com or .ca, or is it just clearbags.ca, which is a website just, that just sells clear bags. So that is a, another good place to get them. I never need them in a huge, Quantity, so that's why I just order them from Amazon. I also put my prints inside of cello bags as well. You peel off a piece of plastic and it sticks down on itself. So for actually shipping things, um, I use different size envelopes depending on the order. I use these little brown envelopes for the small sticker packs and um, for, th for these medium size, I use them for the bigger sticker packs and bigger prints. And then for bigger orders, um, some of my prints are too big to fit in this size envelope um, with the stiffener so I have to use these bigger envelopes and I fold them in half and it just adds extra protection um, you don't have to fold it in half these are just the size that I'm trying to get rid of so I fold them in half I put a I always include a piece of chipboard and I will put the print inside a plastic bag and tape it to the chipboard to keep it from getting bent because if it moves around inside the envelope like this, then it can get bent on the side of the chipboard, so taping it into place is a really good way to make sure it's secure. So here's a print that already has a bag on it, and I would find a piece of chipboard that actually fits it. This is too small, but you tape it on. And if so, the person also ordered an enamel pin, I like to put the enamel pin on the other side so that it doesn't dig into the print, and I like to put the stickers on this side 
and the enamel pin on that side. That's why I don't like to use um, stiff mailers because they're heavier, they make the shipping costs go up, and I can't separate the print from the pin with this piece of cardboard, so that's what I like to do. It's just important to have a sturdy enough envelope so that the pin doesn't, um, so that this backing point of the pin doesn't rip through the envelope. For um, stamps and stuff, I mean like ink stamps, I use this do not bend stamp on print orders. I got it from Vistaprint. Um, and I designed it myself. I didn't really do a good job of stamping that and I carved this stamp myself And I like to put them on each envelope, but it's just starting to get really hard to use so I need to order like a real stamp um, With a design so I can actually stamp it much easier because this is so hard to do but I stamp it on and it usually ends up looking something like that because it's just so old and it doesn't pick up the ink properly and it's just, it just doesn't work as well as it used to. But the envelope usually looks like that, and then I put my return address in the corner. I just print off a sheet of 30 labels. And these are the easy peel labels. You can find them pretty much anywhere. It's just 30 address labels per sheet. You can even get them at the dollar store, Staples, Amazon, Walmart. And there's templates you can download, and you just put your address into it and print it off. Then you have a whole sheet of your return address. You can also order fancier ones online, but I don't really see why I need to put in the extra costs for something that's just going to get recycled. I buy all of my um, envelopes from Amazon, and I actually buy these little cute craft ones from Michaels and I use a coupon. You can also get a slightly bigger size, which I'm going to use for sticker sheets, and I'm probably going to use these going forward. But this is what I use now, once they run out, I'll be using the bigger size because I want to do more sticker sheets than sticker packs. And this is um, sturdy enough to kind of... Like, it's much thicker than the other envelopes, so it just feels more sturdy. I don't reinforce sticker orders because I don't think they need them. They usually arrive pretty fine. And also, if I'm mailing pins, I'll use a padded mailer if it's just a small order. But if it is a bigger order that involves a print, then like I said before, I put the, the pin on the other side of the chipboard or cardboard or whatever the stiffener is so that it doesn't dig into the rest of the items because it's a bit harder than everything else. I also have a scale so I can tell how heavy things are. I just got it from Amazon and it turns on like that. And you can actually put bigger envelopes in it on this little like prop up thing. So that's just from Amazon uh, and that way I'll know if things are too heavy to send them as a certain type of letter mail. I send everything as letter mail so there's like regular letter mail and then the prices go up depending on the weight and then there's oversized letter mail which is what I send most things as. If it involves a print or a pin it will be oversized but if it's just stickers and stuff it should be just regular mail. And I use stamps for everything. So these are the stamps I have. They're Canadian stamps so I can't really tell you how to ship things because I live in Canada, but if you live in Canada, I just use stamps. So there's US stamps in Canada, there's oversized stamps, which are for Canadian oversized, and then there's international, and then there's just regular um, permanent stamps, which are just to send a letter within Canada, and they usually come in cool patterns. So I use combinations of stamps to make up different postage rates. So for oversized US orders, um, it's like three something, so I put this stamp with one of these. And if it's international, I put two of these, one of these, and one of these. So I just use stamp combinations to send things. And that's how I do it in Canada, but most of you watching are probably not from Canada, and I can't really tell you how to ship things in your own country, because I don't know how it works. So you'll have to do some research and go to the post office and bring some, some example packages and ask them to tell you how much everything will cost to ship. That's what I did. So I'm going to do an example packaging of one of my orders and I usually just grab like an iPad or a computer or something to see my orders. I use the platform Store Envy to sell everything. It's a pretty easy platform to use and um, I used to use Ticktail but now I use Store Envy because Ticktail's gone, it doesn't exist anymore. There's so many different platforms you can use to sell things on and there's tons of tutorials out there. This isn't really about how to set up your store, it's mostly about what I sell, how I make it, and how I package up everything. So this order is a, there's a print and there's three stickers. So what I would do, since it's a kind of small print, I get one of these envelopes. So that will fit. And they ordered the water creatures, sticker pack, the backpack animals, and the star animals. So they ordered one of these prints. I usually have them pre-printed and packaged um, and I sign the back of them. So they ordered this print and three stickers. So what I would normally do is I would take the print Wait, how was that too small? Oh, I forgot that this was... Okay, so this is this is actually too small. 
Okay, so that should fit. So I tape this to the stiffener to keep it from moving around when it ships. And I usually just use washi tape to tape it down. Sometimes I need to tape down a little extra plastic. Then I tape that. Tape that side. And sometimes I'll tape the stickers to here, but I don't really think this needs it. And then I also include a business card. I can't write out thank you cards for every order because I get too many to do that. So I usually just write thank you on a, on a business card. And then everything just goes in the envelope. I like to put it face up just for some reason. <laughs> And the stickers I also put on the same side. If they order a lot of stickers, I'll usually um, secure them, but since it's just three, it's not too big of a deal. And then you take this off and you seal it. And then you, I write their address on it first so that I don't like make any pen marks in the items, but I don't want to show you their address, so I won't do that. And then a stamp goes on it if it's a print. Then I put the stamps here. And this person lives in the United States, and this will be oversized based on the weight of it. Um, so I put one oversized stamp, and then a US stamp because that equals the postage required. It's only like a couple cents over. So it's really the same price as just going to a post office. And then now it's ready for the mail. So this order is just stickers and an enamel pin. So I'd use one of these. They ordered a stone garden enamel pin. They ordered a sticker sheet and two sticker packs. So I don't need a stiffener in this, but I would make sure to put the pin face down on the back of everything like this so that it doesn't dig in. So it would probably go in the envelope like this. And I might actually tape all of these together. It kind of depends. If they order two pins, I usually tape the pins together so that they don't overlap each other in the mail. And this probably needs to be able to fit. I need, um, like my bags aren't exact fits. I just buy them from Amazon. I also buy the stiffeners from Amazon. So sometimes I'll put the that in first and then put everything there and then I make sure it goes all the way and it should be fine like that because it's just um, three sticker packs and a pin so as long as the pin the flat side of the pin is, is touching them then it should be fine if you're worried about it moving, you can even fold the envelope over like that. And then that's just, that's a pin order. If you want to see an overview of how I store all my shipping supplies and where I keep them, I did a studio tour showing my whole organization for that. It's really not much. Um, it's not really that organized. I just have everything in a drawer, in like a, like a cart of drawers. So if you do want to see that, it's in my studio tour. So I hope this kind of gave you an idea of some things you can put in your store, how you can make them and package them and send them off. It's really not that hard to do. It just takes, um, there's a lot of learning up front and then once you learn how to do everything and how shipping works where you live, then it's actually a pretty easy thing to do. And if you can't afford a printer, you can always order stickers and prints and other things from printers. A lot of people prefer to do that anyway because it's a lot easier. And enamel pins come from manufacturers. So if you don't, if you can't afford to like make things yourself, you can always order them in from other companies. And when people buy them, it pays for the costs of you ordering them. So I really hope you found this video interesting and helpful if you are also looking to start a store. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.